Hi and welcome to Hack an Instant. Today I am going to make a leaf shutter, a servo controlled leaf shutter. Now you think why would I need to do that because I'm just hacking instant cameras, right? Well just recently I've been getting into large format. So I made this camera, I modified this lens, but this, is a, this lens goes on an SLR camera and so the lens doesn't have a shutter built in. And what I found out is you can buy large format lenses fairly inexpensively, but if you buy it with a shutter, they cost a lot more money. So this is what I want to do. Can I make a large format shutter? Um, can I make one that would work just for paper negatives and for lift film? Paper negatives and stuff, uh, you shoot at ISO 3, so you just need a very low shutter speed. So I found a shutter design on Thingiverse and really liked it. So just kind of tweaked it a little bit, made it work a little bit better and printed it up on my 3D printer. So you have the base, you have the actuator, uh, you have some leaves and a gear and a, a, a top. And I also had to get this little servo. They cost about uh, a couple bucks off of AliExpress. And then I had to make a unit and program it um, with an Arduino. So I made an Arduino controlled um, servo operated shutter here. So what were the steps I needed to do? Well, first of all, I printed up the base and if any of you ever have done anything with 3D printing, you'll know that it is not straightforward, especially when you are making something as delicate or something as accurate as, as leaves rotating on pegs because it prints the pegs and everything. So after printing it up, of course you have to take the file and you have to make sure that all the prints, all, all the pegs are very straight. You have to make sure the holes are, um, are nice and round and everything. So it takes a little bit to prepare all of these little pieces to make them work. And this is the actuator. This has to fit in here just nicely and it has to spin back and forth just right. So um, that, you know, it might look like it only takes a few minutes to put this together, but there's a quite a bit of prep time in making everything fit just perfectly after 3D printing. You'll notice, also notice right here that um, one of the pegs broke off. So, which is, I've, this has happened to me before. So I've had to actually cut a little steel peg and drill a little bit of a hole and heat the steel peg up and sink it into the 3D uh, printed base here and that gives this thing the peg that it needs is a little bit more permanent it's not going to break off so that is one of the flaws of 3d printing is that there is uh, that especially in this dimension what the vertical dimension um, little pegs like this are fairly weak um, just because you're putting one layer of plastic on top of another okay so let's start this, the, basically a shutter works with, with two pins. Each shutter has two holes in it. And one hole goes, goes on the actuator, one hole goes on the base. And what happens is, is when you put the two holes, line them up and stuff, and you just turn the actuator, it turns the, it flips the shutter blade in and out. Pretty straightforward. It's, pre it's, it's relatively simple, and I, it's kind of funny that um, that it's so simple yet so complicated. Because making one of these things, um, like out of metal and stuff like that, is not easy, and they're very expensive. So what we'll do is we'll just install all the leaves and make sure that it's all working before we put the rest together. Okay, so here we have the shutter body. And you'll notice that little extra pin I put in there. And the actuator, which has a gear um, which will engage the servo. So we'll just put the actuator into the shutter body and make sure that it moves freely. And then we'll put each of these shutter blades in one by one. So I made sure that they fit well before I started this video because 
um, is uh, they don't automatically fit well. I had to use kind of a drill to drill these out and kind of widen the holes a bit just to, and then I had to use a file on the pegs. So here's shatter blade number two, shatter blade number three, and shatter blade number four. Now since these shutter blades don't mesh perfectly, I'm not going to put this edge underneath here. I'm going to actually put it on top because if you put it on, if you, if, you, um, if you interleave all the shutter blades, it just won't work. And there's a reason for that is because um, they can't all mesh together. The blades aren't thin enough, which is kind of unfortunate. So I'm just going to test it here. Yeah, there we go. It opens and closes just fine. I think it's always cool to kind of watch how these things work. <laughs> okay, so the next step that I take is to install the um, the gear inside the uh, inside the shutter body to make it engage. Okay, so I'll, I'll install the gear just like this and make sure that it's going to engage just right and then um, all right this gear it just needs a little bit of explain explaining here um, i have to the servo comes with like actuators that go on to this peg and this peg has has kind of a spline shaft so you need to use the actuator i have to cut the ends off the actuators and then glue it inside the 3D printed gear. That way it goes on to the servo just fine. And then it screws on. So I'm going to put this gear into here and I'm going to mount the servo on the back and screw the servo in. Okay, and then I just had to, in order to make it so that it's more stable, I had to put another, an additional screw to screw the servo mount in. Now is the moment of truth. This is where I test it and see whether I did everything right. So here's my Arduino control unit. I plugged the servo into it or the yeah, the servo motor into it and it's got three connections and then I turn it on and see what happens. All right, so it actually opens the blades. <laughs> it's fine. Everything looks like it's going to work. And the way, of course, large format shutters work is that you it opens the shutter so that you can view and compose. And then I just have this Arduino set up so that when you press shutter, it closes it ready for exposure. And then I just set the shutter speed. It's kind of light to see here. Um, let's see, I set it for half a second. And then I'll just press this to take the picture. So let me just describe some of the features of this shutter controlled unit. It's done with an Arduino and I just used a Nano since it doesn't need a whole lot of resources. And so this whole unit can be built for around $10, including the servo, the, the Arduino, and all these little buttons, and even the little screen on there, the display screen. It's all documented on GitHub uh, under my account, Hack and Instant, and with the details and description below. It's, uh, and the program is there, and all the documentation on how to build it, what, how to connect it all up and everything. So, let me just look, look at some of the features. The shutter speed, you can control by um, just the up and down buttons, half a second. If you go past one eighth, it gets to time, which means that you press a shutter, it opens, and then you press it again, and it closes. So it's almost like bulb, except two presses of the shutter button. Uh, one eighth of a second is the fastest shutter speed and you press shutter to, to it says on the bottom if you, I don't know if you can see this it says state 
open for focus. When you press the button, it says closed and ready. That means the next time you press the shutter button, it's going to take the picture. That's an eighth of a second. We have a self timer. So if you just press menu and you can invoke a self timer to for up to 255 seconds. Let's just look at what that looks like. You press the shutter and it kind of counts down for you before it takes a picture. While you're in the self timer menu, if you press shutter, it opens the shutter for focusing and then you can go back and take your picture or um, press the shutter to close it before you take your picture. This configuration menu is kind of complicated, but it gives you all the capabilities I think that you need to set up your shutter without having to reprogram it. So you have your closed shutter angle for your servo, you have your open shutter angle, you have this what I call a shutter, uh, a relief angle, which means like if, if it just opens the shutter and um, it, it's kind of stiff, you, the servo motor will kind of buzz. So I have a relief angle set up so that it backs off the angle however many degrees you specify. I have four degrees so that it doesn't buzz while it's, it, I think it buzzes because it's still trying to open it all the way and if the shutter is stiff it won't do it. Then I also have um, a servo delay parameter, how fast the servo operates, and that's for, that's for the flash sync. The flash sync hasn't been tested, but I do have X and M sync, um, which times the flash, X of course times the flash when it's fully open, M sync times the flash at 20, millim 20 milliseconds before that. So you can change any of those parameters. But those are the features of the, the shutter, and I've used it on the field. It works great. Um, the only thing I have to set up is flash sync. I think I have to get some sort of opto isolator to drive the flash. So there you have it, a servo operated shutter. I'm really happy with it. This is the second one that I've made, and that's why I'm doing this video. I want to make it for a homemade lens. Uh, which may I may maybe I'll make another video about that a homemade lens with a couple of acromats uh, 600 millimeter acromats which will give me a 300 millimeter kind of a portrait lens but this shutter uh, remember remember at the beginning of the video we said that the problem with these shutter uh, these make it do it yourself lenses is that they don't have a shutter and that is kind of a big problem because um, the, it's hard to get them you can get a I think a, a Sinar shutter that's part of a lens board, but they're maybe four or five hundred dollars. Well, this costs maybe ten dollars. So it's a little bit more of a cost effective solution for this and it works great. So um, it can just go right in front. I'm going to have to make a mount for it, 3D print a mount and it kind of just goes in front and you can set the shutter uh, for and this basically this is not for high speed film. OK, so and if you for those of you who are interested, um, trying to make this go faster is really not an option. There's maybe you can get a little bit faster of a servo um, and you might be able to get a servo that's like twice as fast. Uh, so you might get a fifteenth of a second. And I suppose if you can modify the gearing so it doesn't have to move as far, maybe you can get maybe a double the speed again, maybe a thirtieth of a second as fast as, but this is not a high speed shutter. High speed shutters, I believe, would work best with springs and a servo just doesn't cut it, but it works very well for my needs. I'm shooting a lot of lift film, and which I think is super cool. Uh, five by seven, four by five, and, and just recently eight by 10 lift film. So uh, this shutter works absolutely perfect for that. And uh, as I said, I've already tested it. It works great. And if you want to try and build one, um, let me know your experience in the comments below or contact me. And if you have any questions, of course, write a comment and I'll be sure to see if I know the answer and come up with it. All right, well, thank you for listening. And um, maybe we'll look at uh, making an aperture next time for something like a, a do-it-yourself lens. All right.